let's kick things off with Evangelion. After what feels like forever, Bandai has officially unveiled that they're releasing a metal build, Ava Unit 0, and it's looking fantastic. It's styled in the same aesthetic like their Unit 1 and Unit 2, and that's to say, it's hyper stylized. Ava Unit 0 also comes with a boatload of accessories, and on the subject of accessories, a separate accessory pack is being sold that's compatible with your metal build Avas. I'm very much looking forward to completing the trio in the metal build line. And speaking of completing the trio, we also get a first look at their Dynaction Ava Unit 0. Now this is the only image that we've gotten, and it really shows the size disparity of the Dynaction Avas and their Robot Spirits counterparts. For the folks who prefer their Avas gigantic, the Dynaction Avas are for you. Plus, they're also really poseable, they're basically supersized Robot Spirits with some metal parts. Moving on to something smaller, the NX Edge line is getting Type F variations of Ava Unit 1, Unit 2, and Unit 0 from Evangelion the game. Let's end the Ava coverage with some robot spirits. They showed off the new Ava Unit 1 and the Ava 13 in this interesting backdrop, which is a reference to the final rebuild movie. Another interesting display is this photo. I originally thought that this is the Ava Unit 8 we're getting early next year, but according to the product description, it seems like we're getting another Unit 8 based on how it appeared in the third rebuild movie, and the one beside it is the Ava Unit 2 Beta. Hopefully a Mark 9 is in the future. To end the Ava coverage, they also revealed a Robot Spirits Ava Mark VI. The Mark VI always felt like the most mysterious Ava to me because from what I recall, it only really appeared at the tail end of the second rebuild movie. Now don't get me wrong, this reveal is fine and dandy and I'm very excited for the Mark VI. But what's missing? We have no updates on the Ava Unit 3 that was revealed a couple of years ago when Bandai announced that they were reviving the Robot Spirits Avas. Hopefully, we get release info on that one soon. Bandai also revealed a pair of pretty ladies from Uma Musume Pretty Lady, Tokai Teo and Rai Shower. When I first saw these two, I immediately thought, isn't this more of a Figma thing? I have no prior knowledge of Uma Musume, but speaking of pretty ladies, Bandai also unveiled SH Figuarts Miss Pac-Man. Pac-Man as a whole is an interesting choice to join the SHF line, but the classic video game franchise deserves some love too. And speaking of classics, Zotch Bell is getting the SHF treatment starting with Kyo and Zotch, a series that I vaguely remember watching when I was younger. Another series from my youth is Digimon, and when I saw that there was a Digimon exhibit, my heart stopped a little and hoped that we were getting new figures. And, well, we are. But it's another premium recolor. This time, Gallantmon slash Dukemon, which don't get me wrong, I want this guy. I never got the original release, but I was hoping for new characters, like maybe Seraphimon or Magnadramon. Good news for Sailor Moon fans though, as SHF Eternal Sailor Moon was on display. Hopefully release information is sooner rather than later. Star Wars is still ongoing in the SH Figure Arts line, and they revealed Moff Gideon and Luke Skywalker Mandalorian version. Surprisingly, Marvel didn't reveal any new Spider-Man No Way Home figures, but we did get to see the Spider-Man Black and Gold suit and the Spider-Man Upgraded suit on display. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is getting an SHF of Wenwu. And the only Avengers Endgame figure that was on display was Iron Patriot Mark IV. This is the second show in a row that this was displayed. It was revealed in last year's event, and hopefully Iron Patriot doesn't make it three shows in a row. There was a serious focus on the new subline Avengers Tech On, which from a quick glance is basically Avengers, but all of them are Iron Man. They showed off Black Panther, Wolverine, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, and Iron Man, who's set to release very soon. Making their comeback to the SH Figure Arts line is Wild Tiger and Barnaby Burks Jr. as they appear in the upcoming Tiger and Bunny 2. And speaking of comebacks, it's the return of Super Sentai slash Power Rangers to the SH Figure Arts line. Now I'm more of a Power Rangers guy than a Super Sentai guy, but I am still very excited for SHF to tackle teams they didn't during their first run. At this moment, we only really got this picture of various Red Rangers. Most of these are the older figures, and I'm not sure if they're getting reissued, but what stands out is Zen Kaiser from the current Sentai show, Zen Kiger. 
Another return, or should I say revival, in the SHF line is Naruto Shippuden. Now this was announced a few months back in NYCC, but now we get a better look at their figures. We get Naruto, Sasuke, and finally, the final piece of the puzzle to complete the classic shonen trio, they're finally making SH Figure Arts Sakura. Steering away from SHF a bit but still keeping it shonen, the next entry to the Imagination Works line is One Piece frontman Luffy. Onto a more current shonen, and they showed off the quartet from Jujutsu Kaisen in SH Figure Arts form. They also showed off a Figure Arts Zero of Sukuna. Now let's proceed to Kamen Rider. Starting off with Reiwa Riders, they finally unveiled a pair of leads from the current series, Kamen Rider Revise. Going backwards a bit to Kamen Rider Saber, and we were shown Durandal Ocean History along with Sabella. They also revealed Kamen Rider Saber in his primitive dragon form along with Daigo Speedy. Zero One is still going strong and we'll be getting Vulcan Lone Wolf, Zero Two, and he's not a new reveal, but Arc One was also on display. Shifting eras to Heisei and we're getting Shinko Choseho versions of Kamen Rider Saga, Kamen Rider Zeronos Zero Form, and Deneb Imagine. They also showed off their Kuga Rising Ultimate and Decade Complete 21. Bill Genius Form was also on display, but we've known about that one for a bit now. Kamen Rider Ors is celebrating its 10th anniversary soon, and Shinko Choseho of the Burakawani combo was shown, along with Tokugawa Yoshimune. Now I love Heisei Riders, but it's so cool that they're showing a lot of Shinko Choseho love to Showa Riders in this exhibit. We'll be getting Shinko Choseho figures for Kamen Rider V3, Kamen Rider Stronger, Kamen Rider X, and Rider Man. I'm personally excited for these because they are some of the more visually interesting riders, and their previous figures badly needed an update. And to close out Kamen Rider, we will be getting a renewal version of Battle Hopper. Admittedly, I was kinda hoping they would transition into Black RX and show us a Shinko Choseho of RX, but sadly, we didn't see that for now. But what we did see is an uncolored prototype of SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Black Sun. Now let's end SH Figure Arts coverage with what's arguably their most popular line, Dragon Ball. Sadly, they have no new Dragon Ball figures, which is a shame because I would have liked to see a Yamcha and Puar, or maybe even a Cyborg Tao Pai Pai. Moving on to Z and the Namek Saga is still in full effect, they unveiled Kid Gohan and Krillin in their Frieza Force armor. They seem to be slowly pivoting to the Cell Saga as we get a better look at their imperfect Cell, and he looks terrific. We did see this before in NYCC, but now we have a better look. I was hoping that maybe they reveal an updated perfect Cell, because the old one badly needs an update, but I'm sure they will down the line. What they did reveal is Dr. Jiro or Android 20, and this could very well be a precursor for Android 19. As for Dragon Ball Super, they further showed off their Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 from the new movie, Dragon Ball Super, Super Hero. Now Bandai has acknowledged the existence of GT, and since SS4 Goku is releasing this month, a lot of people are probably disappointed we didn't see any GT characters. I was personally hoping for an SS4 Vegeta, or even better, maybe a baby Vegeta, but it was for naught. Then again, SS4 Goku also didn't show up in last year's event, and here he is a few days from release. Moving on to some robots, starting with NX Edge, or as I like to call it, the Wataru line. They unveiled a lot of new figures. I wish I could provide more commentary, but the only mech I know from this series are Ryujin Maru and Ryusei Maru. Brain Powered is making its way to the Robot Spirits line, and we've had a trifecta of reveals. Kyokai Senki is a current mecha anime that I've yet to watch, but following the release of their Robot Spirits Enbu, we're getting two more Robot Spirits figures from the series. Aura Battler Dunbine is still going strong, and we get a display of their Robot Spirits Bozoon General Use and their Robot Spirits Skulma. Steering away from Robot Damashi a bit, and High Metal R is getting L Game Mark II from Heavy Metal L Game. Speaking of High Metal R, Mac Cross is getting a bit of a revival in the line as we see Roy Foker's VF-0S, a destroyed Tomahawk, and Hikaru Ichijo's Super Valkyrie. 
And since we're in the topic of Macross, we're getting a proplica of Ronka and Cheryl's microphones. And from the product description, they aren't fully functioning mics. DX Chogokin Kairos Plus was also on display, both in Hayate and Mirage's colors, just to taunt the ones who took an L on pre-order night, like myself. And additionally, they showed off the super parts for Hayate's Kairos Plus. They also revealed a DX Chogokin VF25 worldwide version, as well as a teaser image for a DX Chogokin YF29 Maximilian Genus. Moving on to Soul of Chogokin and Mazen Kaiser is getting a special 20th anniversary SOC. Shingetter 1 is finally getting an SOC, and despite having a glut of Shingetter 1s in the market, this seems to be the most anime accurate yet. The King of Braves is getting some buddies as Choryujin and Dimension Pliers are also joining the SOC line. And additionally, they also teased Gao Fai Gar with Repli Gao Gai Gar. And to add even more to that, Triple G's brave brethren, King X Kaiser, is also joining SOC. And as a final addition, the man himself, Gai Shishio, is also getting a Soul of Chogokin. They also showed off Soul of Chogokin number 100, Gai King and Daiku Mario, and it's looking massive. A separate power up set has also been revealed. SOC 101 Dai Tetsujin 17 was also in the show, along with Dai Tetsujin number 18. And finally, SOC Mecha Godzilla Type 3 Kiryu was also on display. And since we're on the topic of Godzilla, they also showed off their Monster Arts Godzilla 2004, along with other figures we already knew were coming. SRW30 has been out for a bit now, and we're getting a Metal Robot of Hookbane 30th. Not to be confused with Metal Robot Hookbane 30, which is the one that comes with the game and being scalped to hell in the secondary market. Hookbane 30th is cheaper, but it's far from inexpensive. Moving on to some metal builds, and I, and I still can't quite figure out why there's a subline called Dragon Scale. It made sense for Ryujin Maru, because he is a dragon, but for the newly revealed metal build Serbine, it kind of doesn't make sense. Naming specifics aside, Serbine is looking fantastic. But for me personally, the show stealer and the item I want the most beating out the metal build Ava Unit 0 and a certain metal build that I'll get to later, it's the metal build Guren Saiten. Despite being teased a few days ago, I was very excited when I finally got to see it online. The Guren is one of my favorite mechs, it's certainly my favorite nightmare frame, and I'll try my best in getting and reviewing this one. Let's end the coverage with Gundam. Crossbone Gundam is getting a whole lot of love as they revealed two more robot spirits from Crossbone Gundam Dust. They also showed off their metal build Crossbone Gundam X-Zero full cloth. The Ver Anime subline is focusing on the OHMS team, and I'm all for it. They showed off their Gundam ground type, Jim ground type, Zaku 2 JC, a bunch of option parts, and much like he did in the OVA, Norris Packard steals the OHMS show with a reveal of an updated Goof Custom. And they even showed this off in a diorama, recreating one of the show's best scenes when the Goof Custom absolutely brutalizes that mass prod gun tank which, apparently, we're also getting a Robot Spirits of. And just as I said that I'm done covering Seed, Bandai went ahead and revealed a brand new Strike Gundam. Moving on to Ka's signature, we finally get an update on the Bethes Kai. If anyone remembers, this was revealed nearly a decade ago, and hopefully it won't take as long for the actual release. We also caught a glimpse of their Proto Rick Diaz that was also in the show two years ago. And finally, the big one in terms of cost signature, they showed off to see Gundam Hathaway version. And I cannot wait for this big Mamma Jamma. Metal Robots also have their share of UC love as Tamashi showed off their Hyakushiki Kai and their prototype Double Zeta. The TR6 Hazel was also on display, but this time we get to see it with the G parts. Here's the Hazel Hurududu, and it's looking quite sharp. The Metal Robot Wing Zero was also on display, and, and sadly, this guy got delayed to a December release. Gundam Epion was also on display, and it's looking fantastic. 
Epion isn't due for release until next year, and I will be reviewing this one too. Surprisingly, no IBO for the Metal Robots. I was hoping that we would see that Kimaris Vidar that they teased a few months back. On to Metal Build slash Metal Composite, and they showed off their Metal Composite Zaku 2 Shin Matsunaga and Zaku 2 Johnny Raiden. The Metal Composite Wing Zero EW Early Color version was on display, and one of the most notable images is it seems we're also getting a Metal Composite Death Scythe EW. We got a teaser silhouette of a Metal Build Strike Noir, and a back-to-back -back shot of the Metal Build Astray Red Dragon, and Astray Blue Frame with a Sniper Pack. Hot off the heels of the Metal Build Freedom and Metal Build Justice, Tamashi reveals the big bad from the series, Metal Build Providence Gundam. But don't get it wrong friends, it's not the biggest reveal. Because finally, to kick off the Accelerate UC plan for Metal Build that was announced a year ago, we're getting Metal Build High New Gundam. Now for a lot of people, the High New is the show stealer and it looks amazing. Now, I gotta be honest, this is not an indictment on the High New, but the regular New deserves some love as well. We have three to four metal robots of the High New, and it's also kickstarting the Accelerate UC in the metal build. I guess the New did kick off the metal structure line, but that's out of a lot of people's price range. And speaking of metal structure, let's end this episode with the metal structure Sazabi. This has been two years in the making. I remember it was teased as early as when the Metal Structure New got released, but this big boy is looking awesome. I'm personally priced out on this line, but for those who want the biggest and baddest version of the Sazabi, there you go.